For which values of k will this equation have one negative and two distinct positive rows? This is one of those questions that people usually run away from, but we're about to do it in a couple of minutes. Let's look at 10.1. Show that a is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to 6. Let's look at the information we have. We are given the equation for the graph h of x. It is said that h of x is equal to ax to the 3 plus bx squared. What information do we have? We are given two points, one at the origin. Our second point is another turning point at x is equal to 4. We have two variables, a and b. Generally, we would need two equations. Let's substitute B and see where we end up. If we do that, the value of H of X will be uh, 32 and the value of X will be 4. So 4 to the power 3 plus B, 4 to the power 2. We're going to have 32 being equal to 64 A plus 16 b let's make b the subject of the formula since it has the smallest coefficient if we do that we're going to have 32 minus 64 a being equals to 16 b we can divide both sides by 16 if we do that we're going to get 2 minus 4 a being equals to b we can see that this is our equation one which other information do we have we can still exploit this very point. It is at the turning point. So we can find the derivative of h of x and still substitute the same coordinate. We say that h of x is equal to ax to the power 3 plus bx to the power 2. If we derivate this, we're going to get h prime of x being equal to 3ax squared plus 2bx. At the turning point, the gradient is zero. So we can substitute B all over again. But then this time, we're going to get zero being equal to 3A. X is 4 squared plus 2B multiplied by 4. So we're going to get zero being equal to 4 squared, that is 16, 16, 32, 48. So we have 48A plus 8 b so zero is equal to 48 a plus 8 in place of b let's put equation one so if we do that we're gonna have 2 minus 4 a zero being equals to 48 a plus 16 minus 32 a minus 16 will be equals to what is 48 minus 32 that is 16a. If we divide both sides by 16, we're going to get a is equal to minus 1. Uh, if a is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to 2 minus 4a, then b shall be equal to 2 minus 4 multiplied by minus 1. b is equal to 6. And this is what we are required to show. Let's look at the following question. 10.2 we're supposed to calculate the coordinates of a a is one of the x intercept of our graph h of x so x intercept will let y be equals to zero if we do that in this situation we're going to have zero being equals to a x to the three but we know that a is minus one so we're going to have minus x to the power three plus bx squared b is 6 so we're going to have 6x squared if we divide both sides by minus 1 we're going to get x to the power 3 minus 6x squared being equals to 0 we can take x squared as a common factor we're going to have x squared multiplied by x minus 6 being equals to 0 so x is equals to 0 or x is equals to 6 we know that x is equal to 0 is at the origin. So x is equal to 6 should be the x coordinate of a. 
So a is the x intercept. So we know that the value of y is zero. So we're going to have the coordinates of a being six and zero. Zero is coming from the fact that it is an x intercept. It is not this value here. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Uh, let's move ahead and look at 10.3. So the question here says that 10.3.1, uh, uh, let's write down the values of x for which h is increasing. We need the values of x for which h is increasing. h is increasing when the slope is positive. From 0, that's our turning point up to x is equal to 4 another turning point so it is increasing in between 0 and 4 at 0 and at 4 it is stationary it is neither increasing or decreasing so we can say that when x is between 0 and 4 our condition is satisfied let's move to the following question 10.3.2 uh, the values of x for which our function is concave down. So let me show you something. Uh, this is concave down. And right here we have concave up. So we need the value of x where the concavity changes. Somewhere here in the middle, the concavity is going to change. So how can we possibly find that value? You can say that x is equal to x of turning point 1 plus x of turning point 2 divided by 2. If you do this, you're going to be able to get uh, the value of x for which the concavity changes. Another way of doing it, you can find the second derivative of your function and equate to 0. So we're going to have x being equal to the turning point here is 0. So we're going to have 0 plus the turning point here is at x is equal to 4 everything divided by 2. So 4 divided by 2, that is 2. So when x is greater than 2, we can see clearly that our function is concave down. It is ultimately going down. It starts going up, but ultimately it is going down. 10.4. For which values of k will that equation have one negative and two distinct positive rows? I want you to realize something. This right here is just h of x minus 1. This is just h of x minus 1. So what does x minus 1 do to a function? It shifts it one unit to the right. If it was x plus 1, it would shift it one unit to the left. So let's just go ahead and shift this function one unit to the right first and then we're going to look at everything else after so if we shift it to one unit to the right then it should look something like this if it is shifted one unit to the right the position of the positions of our intercepts changes let's look at what the question is actually asking us to do we're supposed to look for the value of k uh, that will lead to one negative and two distinct positive rows so what does k do k shifts your graph either upwards or downwards if it is plus k then you shift in it k units up and then if it is minus k you shift in it k units downwards let's go to a graph and make sense of the situation so we need two distinct positive rows how many rows do we have now we have one two which are all positive but then that doesn't satisfy our conditions we need two positive and one negative we're gonna achieve that by shifting our graph we need to shift our graph such that this y intercept is now below the x axis if the y intercept is below the x axis then our graph will have one negative root and two positive roots so we need to find the value of that y intercept uh, we have some f of x which is equal to minus x minus 1 to the 3 plus 6 
x minus 1. In order for us to find the y-intercept, we need to let x be equals to 0. So let's see what we're going to get when we do that. If you put that in your calculator, you should get 7. So that tells us that we need to move this graph at least 7 units downwards. Let's say we move it to this point. If we move it to this point, you can see clearly that we're going to have one negative root and two positive roots. But then if we move it to this point, then we only have one root. So we need to move it at least seven units downwards, but not greater than 32 units. Because if we move it more than 32 units, then we end up with one negative root. So it needs to be somewhere here. Then our conditions will be satisfied. So what are we saying? We're saying that we need k to be between 7 and 32.